Royal Caribbean cruises are great vacations for families, and there are a few tips and tricks to help maximize your cruise experience. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and I'm coming to you with a big list of the 50 best tips and secrets for going on a cruise with kids. Knowing the most important things parents should be aware of before they board a ship can save so much time and money. The more tips you can plug into your trip, the easier your travel planning is going to be. I've been cruising with my kids since they were both six months old, and I've been taking cruises with other families who have kids, so that means I have a pretty good cross-section of family cruising experience to share. Now, if you want your own copy of the list after today's video, drop us your email at royalcaribbeanblog.com slash kids tips, and we'll send you every single one of these 50 tips right to your inbox so you can refer back to them while planning away. All right, let's jump right into these 50 tips, starting with planning tips. Number one, buy your kids a passport. Passports cost money, and kids' passports expire just after five years, but they're so worth the investment. Having a passport for everyone in your party, that means you should get one too, by the way, makes the check-in, embarkation, and disembarkation process so much easier. I think one of the biggest sources of frustration for families on a cruise are the lines and steps required to check in and out of your cruise. So having a passport makes it so much faster and simpler. Next tip is to make sure your ship has a nursery. If you're going on a cruise with a child under 36 months old, make sure the ship has a nursery on board. Most Royal Caribbean cruise ships now have a nursery, but there are still a few that do not. And I would say that if you got kids under 36 months old, you should avoid those ships. The nursery is a godsend for parents with toddlers because it offers excellent supervised child care for children of that age. Kids can eat, play, and even nap in the nursery, making it an important resource for parents who want to take a break now and then. Number three, be aware of age restrictions for babies. Before you book a cruise with your newborn, make sure you're aware of Royal Caribbean's current infant policy. Infant sailing on most cruises in North America, Europe, Australia, and Asia have to be at least six months old by the first day of the cruise. For transatlantic, transpacific, Hawaii, select South America, and other selected cruises, infants need to be at least 12 months old from the first day of their cruise. Any cruise that has three or more consecutive sea days requires infants to be at least 12 months old by the first day of the cruise. Number four, choose a ship with Splashaway Bay. Splashaway Bay is a kids-only aqua park on Royal Caribbean, where you'll find small slides, water cannons, a dredge bucket, and a jungle gym placed in shallow water. If you aren't sailing on a ship with Splashaway Bay, check if the ship has a baby splash pad available on board because kids in diapers are not allowed in Royal Caribbean's pools with the exception of the baby splash pad. Number five, consider an internet package or the Royal Caribbean chat feature. Teenagers have a lot of freedom on board Royal Caribbean, but it's important to be able to communicate with them throughout the day while they're off exploring with new friends. There are two main ways to stay connected on a cruise, an internet package or the Royal Caribbean app chat feature. If you're traveling with teens, consider booking one of them these two options that you can stay in touch while on board. By the way, if you're wondering, internet packages are typically priced around $20 per device per day, and the chat feature is $2 per person per day. Number six, choose your cruise itinerary wisely. Before you select a cruise itinerary, consider if it's the best option for everybody in your party. Touring cathedrals in Italy every day on a Mediterranean cruise may seem really appealing to you, but it may not be the most exciting destination if you got toddlers with you. Likewise, if you're choosing a long cruise, like eight or more nights, consider how many sea days are in the itinerary compared to port days. If a cruise has five or more sea days in a row, this may not be the best choice for some kids. Itinerary choice depends on your family's interests and ages, but be sure to browse the options before booking the first cruise that you see. Number seven, it might be a good idea to also book a ship that has water slides. While pools are fun, water slides are kings among kids, and not every Royal Caribbean cruise ship has a water slide. When you decide to have a pool day, kids want to do something else other than just relax by the pool. Water slides have been a boom for families since it offers them an activity that kids can do over and over again. So before you book, research to check that the ship you're looking at has a water slide on board. Number eight, if you've got older kids, set spending limits. For older kids who carry their own CPAS card, you may want to enable spending limits to avoid a potential problem later on. First of all, when checking it online, you can choose the option No Onboard Expense Account to prevent your children from using their CPAS card for onboard purchases. Once on board, you can stop by guest services and set a pre-established limit. The arcade, for example, has its own $50 per person daily limit, but you can also increase or decrease that limit to whatever amount you want by speaking to the arcade attendant once on board. Number nine, look for kid-friendly excursions. Consider your children's ages, fitness levels, and interests before you book a tour on shore. Some shore excursions have age restrictions. Discover scuba, diving tours as an example, often has a minimum age of 12 years old. 
Other shore excursions may have strenuous activities like kayaking or hiking. And if you don't think your toddler will fare well with hiking five miles, well, it might be best to plan something different. You can filter shore excursions on Royal Caribbean's cruise planner site by interest, duration, and activity level to help find the best excursion for your family. We're up to double digits now. Number 10, arrive one day before the cruise begins. If you're flying into your cruise port, this is true for everybody, not just if you have kids, be sure to arrive at least one day before the cruise begins. Airline travel is anything but predictable, and you want to ensure your family arrives in the cruise departure city with plenty of time to spare. Plan to arrive the day before your cruise and spend a night in the hotel prior to boarding the ship the following day. Not only does this help ensure you'll get to your cruise, it also gives you a head start on vacation. Number 11, another good tip for everybody, but you got kids, it also applies. Book your cruise with a travel agent. We always recommend booking with a travel agent, and this tip is even more helpful when cruising with kids. Travel agents can look for a family stateroom category that you can't otherwise book on Royal Caribbean's website, and they can also recommend shore excursions and are available whenever a question arises in the planning process. Number 12, this is a really good tip. Get your kids involved in planning the cruise. A Royal Caribbean cruise will undoubtedly be a fun experience for kids, so why not get them involved in the cruise planning process before you sail? Researching dining options, shore excursions, and onboard activities can get kids even more excited about their upcoming cruise vacation. Another way to get kids involved in the cruise planning process is by finding YouTube videos or books about the cruise ship and ports of call. Watching a video tour of the ship you'll be sailing on, for example, while self-serving for me here, can also help kids become more familiar with the cruise experience before your vacation begins. All right, let's move on to money-saving tips for cruising with kids. Number 13, don't buy your kids a dining package. Kids get special pricing, especially restaurants, so buy dining packages only for the adults in your travel party. Children between the ages of 0 and 5 are complimentary, and ages 6 to 12 just pay $10 per kid at any specialty restaurant. When you make a reservation for a restaurant on board, let your server know the adults have a dining package, but the kids don't, and you will get a better price than if you bought the dining package for all people, including your children. Number 14, there is free ice cream on the pool deck. If your kids are craving ice cream, but you don't want to shell out extra money for Ben and Jerry's ice cream, head to the pool deck for unlimited soft serve ice cream. Not much makes kids happier than unlimited ice cream, and the soft serve station is usually available every day from around 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. every single day of the cruise. Number 15, book during a kids' sale free promo. Kids' sale free is a promotion offered by Royal Caribbean in which the third and fourth passengers in your cabin, age 12 and younger, are eligible for a free cruise fare. This promotion can lead to fantastic savings, although you should be aware there are a lot of blackout dates, which tend to occur during, of course, the busiest times of the year. But if you can take advantage of these times, you can really save some serious money, especially in suites. All right, we're going to move on to cruise cabin tips now for families, and we're going to start off with book two staterooms instead of one. My favorite family cruise tip is to book two connecting cabins instead of putting everybody into one room. The conventional thought process is for a family of four or five to book one room for everybody. This is usually what families do at hotels or resorts, so why would a cruise be different? Unlike hotels, cabins on a cruise ship are short on living space, so the experience is not exactly the same in sharing a room on a ship compared to on land. Booking two connecting cabins can not only provide more living space, but you get an extra bathroom, which is a huge benefit if your kids are older. Plus, you'll have separation from your kids when it's time to go to bed. Moreover, booking two connecting smaller rooms instead of one larger room can sometimes actually save you money. Number 17, get a balcony room for some peace and quiet. If you have a child that'll be napping during the daytime on your cruise, consider booking a balcony room. Having access to a private balcony means you can relax, chat, and make noise without worrying about waking your kids up from their nap. You won't have to worry about being extra quiet and silently sitting in the cabin. Plus, you'll have access to the beautiful ocean views from your balcony. You'll likely spend more time in your stateroom than normal when cruising with a young child, so splurging a bit more on extra comforts can be really nice. My next tip for families is to bring a laundry basket. One of the best cabin hacks is to bring a cheap pop-up laundry hamper for dirty clothes throughout the cruise. It's easy for cruise ship cabins to get really messy quickly, whether you got kids or not, but when you're traveling with kids, it's especially the case. Many cruisers will find they have nowhere to put their dirty laundry and end up throwing clothes into a pile on the floor. Instead, purchase a cheap pop-up laundry hamper to place in your stateroom. These hampers don't take up much space in your luggage and can be a lifesaver when it comes to keeping your cabin organized and clean. Number 19, use magnetic hooks to hang extra belongings. Another really good cruise cabin hack that I recommend is to pack magnetic hooks for extra storage space. Because Royal Caribbean cabins have magnetic walls, you can hang anything magnetic in your cabin. Purchasing a pack of sturdy magnetic hooks means you have extra space to hang things like jackets, towels, swimwear, hats, and backpacks. Number 20, pack a USB hub. There are limited outlets in Royal Caribbean's cabins, particularly in the older ships in the fleet. It can be really helpful to pack a USB hub to get more charging space 
from one outlet. This is so helpful when traveling with kids when you need to charge devices for four or more people, especially if you're all staying in one room. Number 21, you can get a crib for your cabin. There's no need to pack a pack and play for your kids on a Royal Caribbean cruise as Royal Caribbean will provide a crib for your child free of charge. When booking your cruise, you'll indicate the kid's age. This will tell Royal Caribbean that a crib is necessary for your cabin. However, it's still a good idea to call Royal Caribbean and request a crib directly. If you realize there's no crib in the room once on board, simply ask your stateroom attendant and they'll provide the correct arrangements. Number 22, pack a nightlight. Cruise cabins can be extremely dark at night, especially if you have an inside room. Consider packing a small nightlight to place in the room so your kids can navigate their cabin should they wake up during the night. Being in an unfamiliar place can be confusing for kids, especially if it's pitch dark. So this can really help negate any uneasy feelings. Plus, it might even prevent you from running into the furniture in the middle of the night. Number 23, decorate your stateroom door. The walls and doors of your stateroom cabin are magnetic, and you'll find many other passengers decorating their stateroom door with fun decorations. Making custom door decorations or picking out decorations on a site like Etsy can be a fun way to get your kids involved in the cruise planning process. All right, let's move on to packing tips, starting with number 24, Pack more diapers and baby supplies than you think you're going to need. While you might use, let's say, X amount of diapers and baby wipes at home each day, you're going to want to pack more supplies than you think you're going to need for a cruise vacation. My recommendation is that you pack at least 25% more diapers, wipes, formula, baby food, etc. Closer to 50% extra is ideal to ensure you won't run out of supplies. If you do run out of supplies, you'll be forced to either buy diapers, wipes, or other supplies on board or at a pharmacy in port. Both options are not ideal, as onboard prices will be significantly higher than at home, and pharmacies in foreign countries may not have the same brands you're used to. Number 25, we're halfway through these tips now. Be sure to pack athletic shoes, long pants, and socks. If your kids are interested in trying the activities on board your ship, like the rock climbing wall, ice skating, zip lining, or basketball court, be sure to pack the appropriate clothing. It's mandatory to wear closed-toed shoes to participate in sports activities on board, and your kids won't be permitted on the sports court or zip line without proper footwear. Avoid slip-on tennis shoes without laces or Velcro, as these may not be permitted on activities like the zip line. Likewise, be sure to pack socks for the rock climbing wall and ice skating rink. Long pants are required for ice skating, too. Number 26, pack a first aid kit. Between running around the ship and exploring new ports, it's not uncommon for kids to be in the need of Band-Aids, antibiotics, seasickness medication, or other essentials. While these are available on board, it's just so much easier to pack a few items in a first aid kit for easy access in your cabin. Number 27, consider sun protective swimsuits. Most kids on a Royal Caribbean cruise will spend their days soaking up the sun, whether at the pool, water slides, or flow rider. When combined with beach days in port, this can lead to a lot of time spent in the sun. Consider purchasing UV swimwear for your kids before a cruise to avoid painful sunburns later. UV swimwear protects against sunburn by blocking harmful UV radiation. While you can apply and reapply sunscreen over and over and over again, using more protective swimwear for kids is a really good idea. Number 28, don't bring a car seat with you. You may not want to bring a car seat on board, and here's why. You won't find any car seats in most taxis in the Caribbean, and it's unlikely you'll want to lug a car seat around the port each day. For a short ride, I really recommend just doing as locals do, putting your kids on your lap or buckling them in regular seatbelts. While this is not a great idea at home at all, it's just the way of life in many cruise ports in the Caribbean. Number 29, pack snacks from home. Passengers are permitted to bring non-perishable food onto a Royal Caribbean cruise. While there's no shortage of food to enjoy on your ship, Having easy-to-pack snacks available for your kids can be helpful when visiting ports or spending time on the ship. Avoid temper tantrums is a really must-do for any parent out there whenever possible. And having some of your child's favorite snacks available if they get hungry can be super helpful. Items like granola bars, boxes of cereal, bags of chips, and trail mix can make for excellent snacks to bring on a cruise. Number 30, bring an umbrella stroller. While you might have the latest and greatest stroller at home, you really should just bring something smaller on a cruise ship. My recommendation is to bring an umbrella stroller on the cruise ship as these are much easier to navigate around the ship compared to the bulk of your options. All right, next up, dining tips on a cruise with kids. Number 31, tips for picky eaters. Kids can be very picky about what they eat. That's probably not much of an update for you guys. The Windjammer is always a go-to option for picky eaters, as you'll find kid-friendly foods like pizza, french fries, burgers, pasta every day. The main dining room has the kids' menu available every evening, with options like chicken noodle soup, chicken fingers, grilled cheese. If you want to dine with your kids at a sit-down restaurant, you can always bring food from another restaurant on board, such as the pizza or chicken nuggets from other restaurants like Sorrento's. Most waiters will even go as far as to grab something like a simple pizza from another restaurant for the kids. Something else you may want to do is ask your head waiter for additional options if you have children. In the main dining room, they can customize a lot of options. Just give them a heads up in advance to ensure the chefs have enough time to prepare something. If all else fails... Grabbing a slice of pizza from Sorrento's is sure to keep your kids satisfied. Number 32, kids can order off the adult menu at specialty restaurants. Even though kids can dine at a specialty restaurant at a reduced cost, 
the waiters don't mind offering your kids the same options as adults. Especially restaurants have kids' menus. But if your kids want something off the adult menu, there is rarely an issue with doing so even at the lower price. Number 33, take the kids to a dinner before Adventure Ocean. One of my best strategies for cruising with kids is to bring the kids up to a windjammer for dinner, then take them to Adventure Ocean for the evening. After that, you, the adults, can go to dinner wherever you like. There's no need to sacrifice dining options to please your kids when you can get the best of both worlds. Speaking of Adventure Ocean, we've got some tips now for Adventure Ocean. Starting with number 34, register for Adventure Ocean on the first day. The first day of the cruise, be sure to head up to Adventure Ocean to sign your kids up for registration as soon as it begins. Not only does this knock out an important must-do, but it ensures you can get up there before the lines develop later on. Moreover, you don't want to be that parent in line to register your kids while all the other families already did so and just want to drop their kids off later in the evening. Unfortunately, you can't pre-register your kids online before the cruise, but head up there on day one in the afternoon during the Adventure Ocean open house to meet the staff, get questions answered, and avoid time wasted later. Number 35, bring kids to Adventure Ocean on the first day. So after you registered your kids for Adventure Ocean on embarkation day, encourage them to attend the first evening session. Just like at school or in extracurricular activities, the first day is often when friendships and cliques are formed. It's recommended to attend on the first day of the cruise so that kids can make friends right away, especially with older kids or kids who tend to be shy. Number 36, if you're going to the nursery, call ahead. If your baby is ready for a nap, then call the nursery and see if you can drop them off the nursery is usually open throughout the day, and in a lot of cases, they'll have availability in the morning and afternoon because most parents book up the evening hours. What I would do is call the nursery and ask if I can drop my child off. I'd let them know my kid is ready for a nap and to provide whatever pre-nap routine they need, like a bottle or a stroller or whatever, and then put them down for a nap and call me when they wake up. This frees up both you and your spouse or anybody else with you so you can enjoy some time on board the ship while your child takes a nap instead of somebody being stuck in the cabin while they take that nap. Number 37, you can leave your kids in Adventure Ocean while you go on a shore excursion. It may feel weird to leave your kids on a ship while you go ashore, but you can safely use this option if you prefer. Some tours may not be open to kids under a certain age, or perhaps your kids just want to hang out on board instead of going on a tour. Whatever the reason, Adventure Ocean is open while your ship is in port. If your tour begins early in the morning before Adventure Ocean is set to open, let the staff know the day before, and if it's a Royal Caribbean excursion, they will ensure that somebody will be there to open up Adventure Ocean just for you. Number 38, bring the kids to the play place. With limited space in cruise ship cabins and other public areas on the ship, it can be difficult to find the best areas for your kids to run and play freely. Select Royal Caribbean ships have a play place room in Adventure Ocean, which is an indoor open play area where kids can run around, play with toys, get an excess energy out, etc. All that good stuff. The play place is unsupervised, so children must be supervised by an adult while at play place, and using the space is free of charge. 39, know the difference between old and new Adventure Ocean. There are two types of Adventure Ocean programming available on Royal Caribbean cruise ships today. The first is the original rendition of Adventure Ocean, which divides kids into the following age groups. Royal Babies and Tots from 6 to 36 months old, Aquanauts 3 to 5, Explorers 6 to 8, Voyagers 9 to 11, Teen Club 12 to 17. The new rendition of Adventure Ocean has different age groups. AO Babies 6 to 36 months old, AO Juniors 3 to 5 years old, AO Kids 6 to 12 years old, and Teens 13 to 17 years old. The old Adventure Ocean focuses more on organized play, whereas the new rendition gives kids more flexibility in what they would like to do. Each Adventure Ocean style has arts and crafts, video games, sports, talent shows, science labs, and more fun-filled programming. All right, we're up to the last 10 tips here, starting with look for family activities scheduled in Adventure Ocean. While Adventure Ocean is Royal Caribbean's kids-only programming, there are select scheduled activities for families throughout the cruise. Activities like crafts, science lab programs, and family-friendly movies can be offered throughout the cruise for the whole family. You can check for a schedule of activities in the Royal Caribbean app. Number 41, understand what costs extra at Adventure Ocean. While the majority of Adventure Ocean is complimentary, there are two exceptions. Number one, any child care for kids between the ages of 6 and 36 months old in the nursery comes at an hourly charge. It charges $6 per hour from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and $8 per hour from 6 p.m. to midnight. In addition, if your kids between ages 3 and 11 are left in Adventure Ocean between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., there's an hourly charge of $7 per child. And lastly, we have some miscellaneous tips. I don't know what category they fit under, but these are still good tips for families if you're going on a cruise. Number 42, pack everything you'll need on day one in your carry-on bag. Be sure to drop off your luggage with your porters at the cruise terminal on embarkation day. Your luggage will be delivered to your cabin, so there's no need to lug suitcases around the ship for several hours until the stateroom is ready. However, you'll want to make sure you have your day bag packed with any essentials you'll need on the first day of the cruise. Luggage may not be delivered to your room until maybe 4 or 5 p.m. on embarkation day, so make note of what you'll need handy that first day. Things like diapers, toys, swimsuits, 
and important documents are all great things to place in your carry-on bag. Number 43, download movies and videos before you sail. While there are countless activities to enjoy on a roller coaster cruise, sometimes all your kids might want to do is watch a movie in the cabin. Download movies from Netflix on your phone, computer, or tablet before the cruise to ensure you have entertainment options for your kids when necessary. You can also download YouTube videos to watch offline as well. While you can technically stream Netflix or YouTube if you have an internet package, there's no guarantee the internet will always be working properly, so it's best to download entertainment to have to watch offline. 44. Have a movie night at the pool. There's a movie screen at the pool on most Royal Caribbean cruise ships, and family-friendly movies are shown every evening of the cruise at no additional cost. Watching a movie on the pool deck can be a fun activity for the whole family, and a different movie is shown every night of the cruise. Number 45. Set expectations with kids and their freedom on board. Setting expectations with your kids before the cruise is really important to ensure there are no problems during the sailing. Kids find they have a lot more freedom on a cruise ship compared to their day-to-day -day life, and it can be challenging to find a balance between supervision and allowing kids some self-exploration. Decide on what works for you and your family in terms of letting kids explore on their own, and make sure your kids also understand there's a curfew for passengers under 18 at 1 a.m. every night. Number 46, slow down your cruising routine. Even though there's a plethora of activities available at any given time on a roller coaster cruise, you don't need to do them all at once. It can be very tempting to plan every day from sunrise to sunset, but make sure you take some time to relax. Slow down your cruising routine so that you and your family don't feel exhausted at the end of the day. Number 47, use complimentary life jackets. All roller coaster cruise ships have complimentary life jackets available on the pool deck. There's no need to pack floaties for your kids to use on board. Instead, Borrow a life jacket and enjoy stress-free swimming at the pool. You'll also find complimentary life jackets available at Perfect Day at Coco Key. Note that the life jackets are not available to be brought off the ship and into port. So if you plan on bringing your kids to the beach on one of those other ports, you may want to consider packing your own life jacket in that situation. Number 48, don't forget the mustard drill. One of the first things you'll need to do on embarkation day is complete the mustard drill. Safety drill involves three steps, watching a safety video, listening to the sound of the ship's emergency horn, and then listening to a short safety briefing at your muster station. You can do the first two steps before ever getting on board, but you'll need to visit the muster station in order to complete step number three. It can be pretty hectic when boarding a cruise ship with kids, and they're most definitely going to want to go to heads immediately to the water slides in the pool. So my recommendation is to finish the muster drill process as soon as you can once you get on board the ship, and then go enjoy all those fun things to do so you don't have to worry about it later on. Number 49, keep kids safe around the railings. Always keep an eye on your children when they're near railings, balconies, or windows. Kids love climbing and exploring, they can get quickly get themselves into a dangerous situation if you're not careful. Never leave young children unattended on a balcony or the pool deck. And number 50, the last one. Remember, this is your vacation too. Cruising with kids often means planning your day around their interests and needs. It's common to see parents spending their days at Splashway Bay, dining in the Windjammer, and shuttling kids from activity to activity. While cruising with kids can certainly be fun, it's important to remember that it's your vacation too. Be sure to take time for yourself on a cruise, whether planning a date night at a specialty restaurant, booking a spa treatment, or sipping glasses of wine at Vintage's. Don't feel guilty about dropping your kids off at Adventure Ocean to enjoy time for yourself. Odds are, both of you and your children will have a fun experience, even if you're in different areas of the ship. So there you go, 50 of our best cruising with kids tips and secrets. Hopefully, this helps you out with your cruise vacation. Let me know in the comments below, what is your top tip for cruising with kids on board a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. I can't wait to read those as well. And hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.